Welcome back to another episode of Here's What I Stand For, and it's another special episode. All of my episodes are going to be special, I would say, but we have a special, special guest today, Keisha of the Kishi B Reflections. Hey, y'all. Tennessee People's Choice Awards finalists. Ooh. <laughs> How you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for being here. Thank you. You didn't have a choice. I was voluntold. Yes. I will be here. She didn't have a choice. She cheating. So. But it's all good. We love each other. I'm using my uh my privilege. My mm-hmm. your pretty privilege. <laughs> I forget. I forget what the the real term that I'm looking for. But like, I think it's privilege. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because I don't do everything for everything. This one here, she seems to get it out of me every time. <laughs> All right, so to start, you know, just tell us a little bit about yourself, what you doing and stuff. Well, my name is originally, what my mama name said was Markeisha, but I named myself Kishi, Bishi, after my aunt's first car was a Mitsubishi Galant, and I just thought the name was so funny, and when I heard Mitsubishi, I heard Kishi, and I was like, Kishi, Kishi, and I'm like, Kishi Bella, and then I'm like, Kishi Be Reflections. Anywho, I'm a photographer, used to be a model for several years, um, wanted to just stay in the industry, so here I am, I'm a wife, mother of two little girls, um, favorite cousin of many, um, and I, uh, you know, I'm an earth angel. Yes. Yes, you are. Speaking of being a mother, an entrepreneur, still working a nine to five, a wife, how do you balance all those different positions in your life? Mm, it's definitely many hats that I'm wearing, but I'm still learning how to like navigate it all. Um, my main priorities, of course, would be my children and my husband and my mental health. So that comes first when it comes to everything, and then. Photography, honestly, is like fun for me. So it's mm-hmm. like a hobby, not necessarily a job. So that's why my nine to five is still in place because it, you know, takes care of me on the daily. Yeah, that is my lavish lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, photography is just really fun. And it's like, it allows me to express myself and help others express themselves without feeling like a job mm-hmm. per se. So when you were modeling, which was a hobby as well, um, did you have like interest of what was going on behind the cameras or because I know you've all uh, I know you've always been creative and we've always done our own pictures but like my photographer is her <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like was it all that always that curiosity honestly no I think as a, as a very very young child I knew head on straight at the start that I was not athletic in any shape or form. (laughs) So I was like, mama, I just want to be cute and wear cute clothes and like (laughs) frown. (laughs) And so, you know, that's what modeling was. And of course, you know, the the experience of it all and the fashions and everything. But um, it, the behind the scenes, like I never really thought of it until after I had my first child and I'm like oh I'm too old to model because you know certain standards are you know between 18 and 25 and I'm like well I'm gonna as well shut down shop yeah. and then so I'm like but I do enjoy the industry I just didn't have as much time anymore mm-hmm. so I'm like what can I do to still be a part of it yeah. but be behind the scenes right so yeah that's where photography came in. and in your your um modeling days you used to travel So I can understand why, you know, wanting to take a step back, but still, you know, be able to create within the industry as well. Mm -hmm. So that's understandable. Yeah. Yeah. So with you just starting or start taking clients Mm -hmm. March of 2022. Yeah. Would you say that you've found your style of photography already or? I'm still figuring it out. Um. I'm just having fun. So I most of the time it's like I have, of course, my set step one, step two, step three of how I do things. But once I get in there, I kind of play around with what looks good for the vibe that I'm trying to capture. Mm-hmm. So do I have an editing style? I would say yes. But do I have an overall photography style? I don't even know if those are separate things. But to me, I don't believe I have my own individual photography style yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe I do. I don't know. So, which, what would you say your editing style is? 
oh, rich. Like, I like to taste my pictures. I like y'all to taste my pictures when you see it. Like, the colors, I want it to be just so rich and flavorful that it's like, you, and the storytelling too. Like, mm -hmm. even if it's one picture or 10, like, you just feel the whole, everything in one. And it like, everything just kind of tells a story, jumps out at you, and then you can taste it. And you, yeah. like, want more of that. So, yeah. So do you do all types of photography, like newborn or wedding or? I do not. And um, specifically for events, I don't do events or weddings just for my own personal reasons. But the main reason would be time away from home and my kids. Like they're at that age where it's like critical that I'm there. And that was also another reason back in the day where I didn't want to model anymore because I'm like, you can't have it all. Because if I do all of this, I miss out on that. So that there's for a balance. Now, newborns, I love the babies. Y'all, I do not know how <laughs> to gentle baby. I mean, I'm sure I do. But when a baby starts crying, I'm, of course, take your time, you know, do your thing. And it's just so funny because it's like, do I help? Do I, like, what do we do? And then it's like, no, it's okay. <laughs> and then I'm like, diaper change. Like, so, like, newborn isn't for me. I often, if it's something I can't do and somebody asks me, I'll politely decline and then advise them of other resources. Like, there are tons of photographers out here that are dope in every, you know, genre, I guess you would call it. So, I will refer you or throw a name out there to where else you can look. Yeah. What do you enjoy most about photography? The results. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it. And originally, I didn't even know it was all that hard work. But mm -hmm. once I got into it, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to edit these pictures, not knowing it was going to take like an hour or two. And I was like, I must be really stoked. Per picture. Per right. picture sometimes. Like, depending on how, how much detail. So, you know, starting off, I would be giving people like 30 edits when I was charging like $50. And I'm like, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now that I know um, the work that goes into it, I forgot the question. <laughs> it was, um, <laughs> I forgot to. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> do you enjoy photography? I do enjoy photography. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I enjoy when the fire starts. So, like, when the client comes in and they're like in the element and their confidence comes out, and then I'm just capturing it all, and it's just like, <laughs> like Rick Ross said, go in. <laughs> and so it, it just that fire it, it literally excites me internally so that's what I enjoy mm -hmm. about photography the results is where I study mm -hmm. okay yeah. the results of and then during the shoot that part yes so um how do you balance your artistic vision with the expectation of the client while still keeping them com within their comfort zone um it helps if I kind of build a rapport with you first. So that's why I have my communication set up the way that they are so that we can have a dialogue first. Mm -hmm. And then I can we can bounce ideas around. So when you show me what you want and then you come in and it's like sometimes it does take people time to warm up. So it's like, OK, you here. We've been preparing for this. Push it out. And then if they're a little bit more reserved, I'll still try to like give them the vision they want, but meet them where their personality and where their energy is so that we're not overdoing it and forcing them to hate it later on. Yeah. Or they'll love it later on, but it just depends on the person and how the energy is flowing. Gotcha. And so earlier you spoke about charging $50 for <laughs> 30 <laughs> pictures. Y'all didn't even know about that. That's when y'all should have booked with me. <laughs> but, yeah. So how did you... Um, set your prices were there any conflicts with setting your prices like inner conflicts of like mm -hmm. oh is this too much or yeah what how did you how did you overcome that too in this market so when i first started i would be doing free photo shoots 50 dollars photo shoots just because i wanted to build the experience portfolio, portfolio and um you know get more familiar with the softwares and everything like that mm -hmm. um so then when i felt like okay I feel pretty good about what I'm putting out because they love me what I'm doing. It's like, okay, $100. And then I'm like, people would tell me, you need to go up. And I'm like, I don't want to because people won't book me. But then I realized, you know, I had to understand. They had to remind me, you used to model. You 
have this expertise. You see things differently. So I literally had to sit with myself and say, charge your worth. Mm -hmm. And the people who want you, want to work with you, will pay your prices. And boy, have they. And yeah. I'm so grateful for the clients that I have had and that are planning to come to me in the future because it's like, this is too high. And even where they are now, I feel like they're still reasonable, but people are like, you need to go up again. Now, I did have some kind of reservations when I started because I would look at other photographers' pricing and I'm like, ooh, they're charging this for like two pictures. And I'm like, I don't want to let people walk away with just two. And that's a part of being just maybe what, I don't know what to call it, but like, no, they're all good. I want you to have them. But then having to like stick to a set of standards, I guess, where it's like, okay, that's a good price for your time. Because realistically, when all those photo shoots start rolling in and you have a certain deadline, yeah. it's like mm -hmm. time just flies by and then you look up and, you know, whatever. Yeah. How do you balance that, uh, your business? with your personal feelings of like, I want to give you more. And you know, how do you balance that? Like My clients said no, no, but <laughs> um, it's, it's hard. It's hard because I, sometimes I have to tell myself, Keisha, stop, mm -hmm. you know, just stop. You've done enough, you know, and that's just what it is. <laughs> <laughs> You had, so it's an internal struggle. It's an internal struggle. Like, oh, <laughs> so. Okay, what would you say is your favorite photo shoot or your most proudest photo shoot? I would have start? to say, there. first of all, I love all the photo shoots. I love all my clients, my repeat clients, like the ones, y'all know. But the one that comes to mind would have to be Marisha. Um, she is the one who had the basket with the flowers and then the green dress and then the whole universe thing around her and everything. I chose that one because I was most creative from beginning to end and it helped because I knew her. So mm -hmm. several months prior to her shoot, she said, when my birthday comes, I want flowers, something like this. She wanted to be in a swamp low key, but <laughs> I gave her a basket. Shout out to my plug um, for the basket. <laughs> and... I'm like, when I saw the basket and I saw the inspiration, I knew it was for her. So from there, everything else just started to flow together, That like how I knew the background should be and how everything should flow. And then when it came into editing her into like the mountains and everything, it was just so fitting for her business, her personality, and the whole universal one. Woo, I was yeah. like, girl, look. It was just, it just, it just filled me up. Yeah. So that one would be my most favorite beginning to end creatively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that photo shoot too. It's it's like the um, the flowers and then uh, the one of her and the guitar and stuff like yeah. that. It's just just timeless. Yeah. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. that was a, a really 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 Thank good you. one. Thank you. Yeah. And then all of yours, of course. I'll let you do whatever you want. Oh, I, mean, like, I don't care. Just do whatever you want. Like when you made my legs longer. I would have to show y'all before. So, <laughs> if you don't know, we are cousins. Our grandparents are siblings. And for some reason, genetically, I'm like almost six feet and she's like barely five feet. Yes. But, you know, I got the short jeans. She got the short jeans. And I just wanted <laughs> to make her tall. But it looked really good. I'm going to have to insert a little so you guys can see. Mm -hmm. Um... Because it's funny, but it looks really good still. And that was actually an uh, inspiration from Naomi Campbell. Mm -hmm. The pose. The pose, sure. yeah. And then, of course, the long legs. Yeah. Because my little short stubbies. <laughs> Which is cute. Yeah. <laughs> very, very cute. It was. It was a really good one. Any advice for um, potential clients or people just overall getting ready for a photo shoot with you or just a photo shoot in general? Um... First and foremost, shop around, compare pricing, compare editing styles, know who you're going to, because we are all unique. Mm -hmm. We all edit a certain way. We all shoot a certain way. It, it, it all may be the same process, but everybody has their own uniqueness. So definitely shop around, see where you're going, trust who you're going to, so that when you leave them, you trust them with your work. Um, also, when you come to your photographer, it does help if you have an idea of what you want, 
because um, especially if we like we are naturally creative as well but it does help if we have a starting point and like an idea or a vision because once you say red dress I'm like Ooh. you know we start thinking of colors and little accents and other details so just have a starting point and you know come with confidence when it is that day for your shoot like no you coming in there to kill it right so how do you deal with um how do you deal with clients who come in but then kind of want to switch it up or or any unforeseen things that happen during the day of uh, the day of a shoot how do you deal with those and maneuver through those well obstacles? i'm pretty good with going with the flow of things because usually during the shoots if the way i shoot we end up with <laughs> more time or you know just because i like to shoot and i move around so often so things do change as we are shooting so most of the time, ideas, they just bounce around, and we'll all kind of be like, okay, yeah, that do sound good. Let's try that and see if that works for us, and then we just go from there. Okay, cool. Any um, advice for people who are wanting to get into photography? Do it. Do it, do it, do it. Like, there's a million and ten of us out here, and we can have a million and ten more. Like, there's enough people to shoot. Mm -hmm. There's enough money to be made, and I don't know if everybody's goal is money. That ain't my goal. My goal is passion and having fun, but if you're chasing money, it's good for that too, I guess, but um, just do it. Sure. Yeah, like, you're going to bring something different than nobody else has seen before, whether it's different, a different um, community of people that you're connected to that everybody hasn't even seen before, or just, you know, anything. You're unique. Do it. Come on, y'all. So I can tell them, go over there. Thank you. Thank you. What's your uh, one, three, and five year plan? Do you have a one, three, and five year plan? Mm. I saw myself shooting for five, and after that, teaching. Okay. But I listen to, I pray, and I listen to God, and when Spirit is like redirecting me and it seems as though, even though I'm not savvy with all the terminology of photography, that could imitate, in, intimidate me when I listen to other photographers and watch videos and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't feel like I'm in a place to teach, but I feel like even after a year and a half now, God has put me in that position. Awesome. Congratulations. There's going to be a lot of, no, this ain't what you supposed to do. <laughs> this is what I do. And it's just my way of teaching because... Technically, I do not know what I'm doing now. <laughs> God gave me the gift, and it, it, should, it just happens naturally. So I'm just teaching what I know, how I learned it. And yeah, that's good. How do you deal with um, burnout? Or have you dealt with burnout? Do you believe in burnout? Prior to taking clients, I went and had a conversation with myself about burnout. And I don't know about y'all, but I compare myself to Beyonce a lot. And... I'm like, if Beyonce can travel the world, do the same dance moves and the same everything every day for various people and still give the full 100%, I'm like, so can I. So I told myself that burnout is a mindset. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay to rest, take a break, yeah. get your mental health together if you need to. Because it can, for me, can get overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, just push through it, you know, like... Like, get into the thick of it and go. Yeah. I would say it's a mental thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that you really have to go back and forth. Yeah. With because yourself. if you're good at something, like, you do it over and over again, it doesn't feel like a job anymore. Yeah. It's like, hmm. it's like walking. Right. And then also, too, um, as you keep doing it, as you continue to push through, you get better. Mm -hmm. Like, with Beyonce shows, like, like Blue Ivy. Right. Example. I was going to say Blue Ivy. Her right. little confidence is, you know, coming out more and more. Right. So she in heels there. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Right. Give an attitude. Right. Spice. <laughs> <It's too much. laughs> right. Yeah. So, so for the last question, um, what does Keisha of Keisha B Reflection stand for? Um, well, first of all, my name. And then I chose the word reflections <laughs> because my cousin will kill me. So, <laughs> when I first got my camera, my cousin was expecting, and I went and get her maternity pictures just, you know, for free. Like, here, girl, I'm taking pictures without still getting my camera. 
And so, actually, you might have to cut that part. I don't want to say that. So, <laughs> <laughs> reflections is basically how you see yourself, how I see you. It's like light bounces from light. And when that comes from you to me, back to you, into the world, everybody sees beauty. Light is a reflection all the way around. So, mm -hmm. I didn't want to use the word photography. Um, I just wanted it to have just a little bit more meaning. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. That wasn't really my question, but... What was your question? What does Keisha stand for? What do, what do you stand for? <laughs> Words, statement. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be more <laughs> um, But that was good to know, though. Okay. <laughs> um, what do you stand for? I stand for confidence, beauty, reflections inward, outward, um, alignment, energy, like... I feel like once you book with me, like we're meant to work together. It's like God put us on each other's path for a reason, whether we work together again in the future or not. It's like it was meant to be towards that moment. So connections. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for coming. Or, well, thank you for having me in well, your you studio. You can only say a little bit of it, but it's really nice. It's studio. only a little bit. But she makes it happen. I just need it four walls, y'all. Yes. That's all you need. If you're a photographer and you need your own space, all that, just get four walls and you can do a whole lot in here. Because yeah. a lot of my work, I started out in the kitchen. Be even even before starting out in the kitchen. Yeah, I was we literally started out in the kitchen. In the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> With a piece of paper. So. Yes, so doing our own thing. But yes, thank you for coming and talking to me. Thank you. And letting the people get to know you. And I'll see you next time at the next episode of Here's What I Stand For. Bye.